Okay, I am going to do a video today on one of my favorite books I've ever written, The Tree of Life. I believe so much in this book and in this book, Beyond Communion, that I will give you a free copy. They are life-changing. I'm sure you never heard of anything like it before. And in this time that we're living in, the craziness of everything's going on and the, the lies and the government and all that stuff um, will really, really help you in the days, in the future of what we are probably going to go through. So, excuse me, I don't have on no makeup. Didn't have time to put any on, didn't want to put it on. My husband is in the house doing, uh, he works from home, so he's doing a Zoom meeting. So I'm out here in the bus. I can't go live for some reason. The connection shuts off. So, and I absolutely love going live because it's like being on TV. And I love being on TV. Okay, so I'm going to start with chapter one. But but in chapter one, it tells a lot about who I am and where I came from. And I really don't want to waste time telling you about that. You can read that uh, when you get the book or just looking up on the internet. The first 30 pages are about me if you type in my name. So the the Beyond Communion revelation and the Tree of Life revelation came to me about the same time. I actually put it in one book and then God said, take it and split it in two and then um, add a lot of stuff to both books. So um, this ended up being both books. So this is really, really, really I promise you, guarantee you, life-changing stuff. So, the first thing I'm going to start with is, um, let's see. Everything on earth is in a death cycle. We have come to accept things that are normal that are really the death cycle. Jesus came to give us life, okay? He gave us a new bloodline. Jesus' bloodline filled from heaven. He Paid for the results of sins, which is every form of death and dying. He died for us and as, as, as us. So the most important thing that I want to establish to you is this. This will change your life. Just this one revelation. That if you read in the book of Genesis, it says, I love the book of Genesis, especially the first one and two, cha one and two chapter one and two. Okay. Okay, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Okay, so if Adam and Eve were going to die, if they ate from this tree, that meant that they were not going to die. They were going to live forever because this tree would make them die. This tree would continue to fill them with life. So if they were going to live forever the only way they could die is if they were first going to live forever okay you have to live before you can die okay so that's really important and i want to point out something really important too um um let's see no i'll wait on that okay so the tree he's in genesis 1 12 and 2 9 it says the tree that yields fruit whose said every tree yields fruit that seed is in itself according to its kind so if the tree was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil then knowing good and evil in other words the law would give you a guilty conscience and the result of breaking the law because you knew good and evil would be death okay and that's where grace comes in that's why the gospel of grace is so very important. Okay, so words are seeds and Jesus is the seed and the fruit is in the word, the seed. So they ate from the tree. But let's go here. Let's go by the book. So every tree in the garden had seed in it after its kind. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth and every tree which yields seed. To you, it shall be for food. Okay. So words are seeds. Seeds are words. Keep that in mind. Okay. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Um, remember, it gave them knowledge of good and evil and produced that seed in them. Now he warns them that the knowledge of good and evil would kill them. So the law killed them and they had to sacrifice an animal because something had to die. 
Okay. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil do not eat from it. Okay. For the day you eat of it, you will die. The above scripture shows us that the wages of sin. Okay. The above scripture shows us the result of the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. The next scripture shows us that the heart that is condemned does not receive from God. 1 John 3, 21. When we feel condemned in our heart, we do not receive from God. That's why the devil comes with condemnation, guilt, and shame. Okay, he's condemning you to the death sentence because you broke the law. Okay, so in Genesis 2, 25, they were both naked and the man and his wife were not ashamed. So they were not, so they were naked. They were naked. They were naked. They were not ashamed. Now, guilt, shame, and condemnation comes on them. They're still naked, but now they ate from the tree of, knowledge of good and evil which resulted in death okay so after they ate so she took of its fruit and ate and also gave it to her husband who was with her and ate and their eyes were open and they knew the knowledge of good and evil okay and here's the result of death okay they knew that they were naked in genesis 3 7 and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering what did they do? They used their own knowledge and covered themselves. Okay. They were condemned. They were guilty. They broke a rule. They thought a new good from evil. Okay. They, and God said, I hear your voice in the garden. And, and he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid and I hid myself because I was naked. Okay. So condemnation, guilt, and shame. So if your pastor is telling you every day to come up to the altar and to repent of everything you did before you take communion, oh my God, you got to repent of all this stuff you've done, everything you can think of. And if you forget anything, oh my word, you're going to die. That's all wrong. That's all a lie. That's all condemnation. That's guilt. That's shame. That's of the devil. Okay. So they were now afraid because they had knowledge of good and evil and they eyes were open. They realized Adam was naked. So what was the result? They were cut off from God. They were naked. They hid themselves from God. They were afraid. Okay. The answer was fear of breaking a rule of doing wrong. They were judged and they were feeling condemned. So that's the biggest problem in the church today. The devil has told us that every time you sin, you got to, you, you got to um, come to the altar. You got to repent. You've done bad this. And, and it's impossible because we do, we do things all the time. Okay. And now you got a guilty conscience. You feel condemned even after you repent of it and say you're sorry. So you got to remember, we should instead be conscious of the knowledge of the blood of Jesus and him paying for a past, present and future sins. Remember, Jesus died before you were even born. So any sin that you commit before you were born again and after you were born again was forgiven by Jesus because he forgave it all before you were even born again. 